Welcome to another episode of the Plant-Based Jan Adventure Series. It's easy to eat healthy at home. I'm here to show you can be done on the road too. Today we are off-roading in Dinosaur National Monument. We're on the Colorado side and the reason we're off-roading is because it's really the only way to see views like this. side of Dinosaur National Monument and first stop is the Canyon Visitor Center and this is right outside of Dinosaur, Colorado, Little Town. The main thing to know about Dinosaur National Monument is that it's split over two states. You see this white line as the border. There's Utah to the west and Colorado to the east, and the dinosaur fossils are on the Utah side. The Colorado side features some of the most spectacular canyon scenery you may have ever seen. That's why I'm doing two different videos for Dinosaur Monument. There's the Utah side, the dinosaur fossils, and that also features petroglyphs, a historic ranch, there's hikes and scenery. And then I'm doing a different video for the Colorado side, and that's where we go off-roading to see these sweeping canyon vistas carved by the Yampa and Green Rivers along with Echo Park. Today in this video, we're cruising through the Colorado side. Where in the world are all these dinosaur fossils? It's in the United States. The monument straddles the northern borders of Utah and Colorado with two thirds of the area in Colorado and about a third of the area in Utah. Utah is where the bones are. Near Vernal, Utah is the main visitor entrance for Utah and it's called Quarry Visitor Center. Across the border in Colorado is the Canyon Visitor Center and that's actually nearest the small town of Dinosaur, Colorado. If you called for home, you have to try not to laugh in this 101 Stegosaurus. Okay, final decision. We have decided to canvas the Colorado side uh, by doing a 4x4 road. This is called the Yampa Bench Road and it's 18 miles. We decided to do this because we just spent some time with a fantastic ranger in the Canyon Visitor Center and he has been on Cathedral Valley Loop. He's done Schaefer Trail, some of the famous 4x4 roads in Utah. I have videos on that. So they call it the Yampa Bench Road because it's on a bench. So we're gonna find a connector road in, which is also County Road 16 off of this main road. Here we go. After talking to the ranger, we decided to, to do the entire loop from the visitor center, starting there and coming all the way around, ending at the visitor center. So we went down 40, which is um, it was about 20, 25 miles to 16. 16 heads 
heads towards the park and then there's a couple more um, roads I think one is called 95 but anyway you work your way towards the park and you take a left on Yampa Bench Road and then that that road itself is 18 miles that will connect with Echo Park Road and then there's some decisions it looks like there's a couple little turnoffs that, to go see the river depending on some of those decisions then you will um, eventually get back up to the main road which is Harper Corner Road and that will then go all the way back to the visitor center so that's going to complete our whole loop and the ranger said um, that, that whole loop would probably be over five hours definitely over five hours it's about 10 miles from 40 up to the 95 turnoff and then it says on the map that it's seven miles once you hit 95 we're heading up 95 right now okay off of 95 we are now entering dinosaur national monument we're at the border We are heading down to the actual bench of Yampa Bench Road and getting there is just super scenic. The fire obviously ripped through here at some point because you have all these twisted, bleached carcasses and juniper trees. This is part of their road, this cool rock. I'm giving you shots of this road. You can sure see that you want a 4x4, four four, high clearance, even better. We're 12 miles in and we're starting to get huge views and glimpses of what's to come through these trees. The trees are still pretty thick up here. Now this is a cool stretch of road, probably fits the definition of what they call a bench. It's a narrow strip of level land with slopes above and below it. It's a great place for a road. We're going to hike down this Bull Canyon Trail. As we hike this Bull Canyon Trail, I'll tell you a little bit about the drive so far. First thing I notice is that we haven't seen one car coming or going, neither in back of us or coming towards us this whole trip. Um, the other thing is we're 14 miles in of the 18 mile road, 18 miles until you get to Echo Lake Road and um we just started seeing some of the epic scenery oh here's a nice little viewpoint off of this trail oh wow The view is so expansive here with this canyon that it's hard to capture everything. I'm going to pan this way. That is to the west over there. That would be the Yampa River. There's a really narrow gorge up there.
Wagon Wheel Overlook. This is the top view of Wagon Wheel Overlook. And if you're itching to get down to the river, it's a 1,000 foot drop. You would go on the Bull Canyon Trail. It's a 1.5 mile trail down to the river, 1.5 miles up, so three mile rounder. And the Park Service cautions that there are a lot of steep drop offs. And of course, you do have occasional wildlife. There are bears and mountain lions that can frequent the area. shade spot for lunch. Lunch today I've got a huge Thai noodle salad. This recipe is on my channel. It's a super easy video. This thing is so flavorful and I put different things in it all the time. It's just kind of whatever you have in your, you know, whatever you have on the road. Lots of vegetables and uh, lots of flavor. I also have, so we have to get lots of greens. I have a ton of spinach, some really good tomatoes I found, and then I put some uh, balsamic glaze on it and a little tiny bit of plant-based cheese on there. So that's what's for lunch today. Super easy circular drive parkway parking spot. So we're heading to Harding Hole, probably another overlook that's just going to blow our minds. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's like a, a hairpin in the river. All of that. Okay, we'll start over here. This is a cliff right here. I'm sure it's an absolute sheer cliff that we're standing on. Always something to remember. And here we have the great Yampa River making its turns, carving out these cliff walls. Epic. The next stop on the way to Echo Park actually is a wrong turn. The signage wasn't that great. We were a little confused as to which way to turn. We thought we were continuing on the main road or the dirt road, I should say. And it turns out it was one of the most spectacular private historical ranches called Mantle Ranch. It is right on the river, right in the middle of Dinosaur Monument. We should have known it has beautiful irrigated meadows and I found out has one of the largest privately owned collections of petroglyphs in the world. Plus, incredible, incredible scenery. But we'll get back on the real road or the road we should be taking in just a moment. After taking a wrong detour, which was really super scenic, we got back on uh, the main road and we've only hit one real low spot with really deep red mud. And now the landscape is changing to the big rolling hills. What we're finding is that all the maps say that Yampa Bench Road in this area is 18 miles. But if you come in from the east side, like we did, we came in County Road 16, it's gonna be a lot of extra driving. And the big scenes, the overlooks, like Wagon Wheel and Harding Hole appear to be clustered on the western side. So if you wanna save yourself a lot of time, just come in from the Echo Park Road area, and you can just drive in and drive back out. This is Chu Ranch. And this is as we head down to Echo Park. We're on Echo Park Road. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that.
Driving down this dirt road, we're on the last part to get to Echo Park, which many consider the heart of Dinosaur National Monument. Dominating the landscape above the river is Steamboat Rock. It is the formation that looks like a massive sail, a big rock sail. As I mentioned earlier, the easiest way to get to Echo Park is via Harper's Corner Road. You get the first 25 miles of smooth and super scenic pavement, and then this last 13 miles is unpaved. We'll catch some unusual petroglyphs and whispering cave on the way back after we hit one of the grand finales, Steamboat Rock. Steamboat Rock. to check out whispering caves so in this canyon way up there straight down we have a little opening in the cave and it whispers it's cool in here stop at these petroglyphs. This is an amazing canvas. Let's go check this out. At first I couldn't see him, but uh, I think I see one now, the head and a body. 35 feet up. Someone else might have to come and ch check it out. We're heading back on Harper's Corner Road. One overarching thing that I will say is if you don't get down into the park, like Echo Park area uh, and, and some of those roads down there, you don't get the full experience of the park. As you can see from the videos, it's so epic down there. It's just a completely different perspective. Thanks so much for coming along. And if you have any thoughts or questions, be sure to leave me a comment. If you subscribe, you'll know when I'm doing my next video. We can all enjoy this greatest adventure we call life.